and a lot of very qualified students aren't going to get into medical school because of the flawed system, not because of a lack of desire or a lack of knowledge or a lack of determination. It's because... All right, so here's the thing, guys. I just got done taking one of my med school exams, and of course, I failed it. Um, but that's nothing new. Like, I've failed med school exams in the past. Um, that's not what gets me. What gets me is this whole concept that you guys really need to understand before going to medical school. And it's that medicine is not a multiple choice test. And I'm going to kind of dive into what I actually mean by that. But, you know, leading up to medical school, all you do is take multiple choice tests. Unless it's organic chemistry, um, then you're doing absolute nothing useful with your life. But unfortunately, you have to take organic chemistry to go to med school and ultimately become a doctor. But you're going to figure out real soon that the road to becoming a doctor is doing a bunch of useless stuff. And not even talking about pre-med, but even stuff in medical school is pretty useless. And so I wanna give you guys a quick example. So the test that I just failed, I got a 60% on the exam. And the class last year, the class average on this exam was a 62%. And I'm a second year medical student, so I'm in the thick of studying for boards as well as my systems classes. So right now, we're in our last block, basically of the semester, which is consisting of endocrine and reproduction. So this is the last block of medical school until I start really, really studying almost full time for boards. And so the test that I failed was in our osteopathic class. So I go to a DO school, as many of you guys know, and part of our curriculum is learning more about the musculoskeletal system, as well as learning like how to be a doctor. So like how to interview a patient, how to do a physical exam, um, and stuff like that. So stuff that you'll be doing in clinic, during your family med rotations, your pediatric rotations, you learn all of that in medical school as well. And so the exam that I took today was for that class. And so here's the thing that really pisses me off is if you calculate our grades for this class, we have two major exams. So we have a midterm, which I just took, and a final. And within this class, we also have stuff like simulated patient encounters and points for different things that we do during lab. Um, and so there's a lot of extra points and basically if you calculate our grade, you can essentially fail the two exams, so the midterm and the final, and still pass the class easily. And so it just like makes you wonder like why, why are we even taking these exams if I can fail them and still pass the class and in my medical education? And it's not only that, like I studied a little bit for this exam, obviously I didn't put a lot of time into it because I know I can still pass the class without passing these exams. But the thing is, is like I dedicated time towards this stupid exam when I should be dedicating that time towards studying for boards. And so I know this is kind of like an all over the place type of video, but I think it's just super important that you guys realize that becoming a doctor is not about taking multiple choice tests because basically what a multiple choice test does is validates what you do or what you don't know. But that is all subjective to the types of questions that your professors or these entrance exam writers are putting in these exams. So if they want you to know one thing, but honestly, like in your specialty that you're gonna go into in the future has nothing to do with that topic, it doesn't matter if you know that stuff, but guess what? If you get it wrong in that moment, then you automatically adopt this mentality of failure, of not feeling like you are qualified or good enough to be a doctor, when in reality, doctors really only know about their own specialty. And so the issue that I see with medical school right now is we have these very specialized professors or physicians that are teaching us so much in depth on that particular specialty that you might not do well in that specialty. It might not interest you, but for some reason your medical school grades have to do with if you can retain that information and regurgitate it on an exam. Not even to mention that three weeks down the line, you won't even remember what was on the exam. And so this just comes back around to how education in general is flawed, not only medical school, but just education in general. 
because we take these multiple choice tests, they either give us a false sense of security if you do well on them, or if you don't do well on them, then you get this sense of failure and that you're not good enough. And I understand that we need some sort of way of evaluating a person's knowledge or understanding of a certain topic, but multiple choice tests probably are not the best way of doing that. And so this kind of brings me back to the whole pre-med curriculum and how to get into medical school and you know taking multiple choice tests, taking the MCAT, and how it's a very flawed system and a lot of very qualified students aren't gonna get into medical school because of the flawed system, not because of a lack of desire or a lack of knowledge or a lack of determination. It's because we put so much emphasis on a multiple choice test where some students use multiple choice tests as a way to validate themselves. So if they don't see that 90%, then they just don't feel like they're smart enough, good enough, um, that they didn't put enough work in. And then there's other people that don't do well on multiple choice tests that are still equally as smart and talented and qualified, but maybe they don't need an exam to tell them that they're good enough or smart enough. And then obviously there's a set of people that literally just don't study and aren't prepared for an exam and we're not really going to talk about that group of people because if you're trying to go to medical school you're most likely not going to be someone like that and i mean guys this is a topic that goes way more in depth than i'm covering and you know as i'm making this video i'm thinking of more and more um, issues with medicine and multiple choice tests and how that's the best way people think um, we should be evaluated when medicine is it's a team sport it's a team career and you're going to be working in a team-based setting so it's not always going to come down to if you know the answer but it's if you can help the team come up with the correct answer the correct diagnosis the correct treatment and you're not going to be working in the emergency room and a patient comes in and it's not going to be a multiple choice test you're not going to have answer choices A, B, C, and D, and you pick what you think the patient has. You have to be able to think on your toes, connect different ideas, you know, look at the patient and figure out what is going on with them because there's not gonna be a clinical vignette stating that the patient is hypotensive and tachycardic and sweaty or pale or clammy or have a rash you have to figure all of that out on your own, put all of those pieces together to ultimately come up with a correct and proper diagnosis. And then, and only then, will you be able to know how to actually treat this patient appropriately. And we miss so much of that with multiple choice tests that when we get out to clinical rotations, we're like deers in the headlight and we don't really know how to think critically at that point. You know, pre-med advisors and medical school admissions committees have always preached that we need to be able to critically think. But even once we're in medical school, we're still not taught how to critically think. We do something really great at my medical school. It's called like a mannequin-based experience, a mannequin-based learning experience. And it's where you and a group of three or four other med students, you go into a room that looks like an emergency room and there's a mannequin there. And obviously there's an actor playing the voice of the mannequin, but these mannequins can do a lot of things. You can start IVs on them. You can give them meds, their eyes blink, they can sweat, they can cry, stuff like that. Um, and it's awesome because there's a vitals monitor and you go in there and you have to figure out what's going on with the patient and you can ask questions, you can get a history, you can do physical exams, you can order labs. And we only do that like two or three times a semester starting second year when we should be doing that weekly. I mean, that is the best experience you can get as a medical student in medical school before actually interacting with real patients. I mean, hands down, it's been the most helpful thing for me at least in learning how to actually go about the process of diagnosing and treating a patient. But what do we put the majority of our emphasis on? Multiple choice tests. And what do multiple choice tests do? 
they evaluate a person's ability to memorize and regurgitate information. Ultimately, for the student to really not retain that information even days after the exam. But that's where we put all of our emphasis on. It doesn't matter that, you know, a week after the exam, the person that got an A can no longer remember the majority of that information, but they knew the majority of the information on test day versus the kid that got a C. But maybe the kid that got a C does really well in these mannequin-based scenarios where they can ask proper history questions, they can interpret lab values, they can order the correct labs, the correct imaging, but because they didn't do well on their written multiple choice exam, they're automatically looked at less than the person that gets an A on their multiple choice exams. And I know this isn't always the scenario, but I'd be willing to bet that this is what happens the majority of the time. The other flaw with multiple choice tests is the whole giant part of being a good test taker. So if you're not a good test taker, you're automatically at a disadvantage and ultimately not going to do nearly as well as someone who is a good test taker because maybe you can't see those subtle clues within the vignette or the question stem that could potentially help you answer the question correctly. And so that's another huge flaw with multiple choice tests is there's so many different aspects to actually taking the test that it can become such a huge disadvantage for a lot of students. So I think at the end of the day, what I'm getting at is there's a huge, huge disconnect between what we've been doing throughout college and medical school and the actual reality of what medicine is, working in a hospital, working as a team, and being able to put abstract concepts together in order to get a valid diagnosis and treatment plan. So if you're someone out there that's maybe not the best test taker, maybe you're struggling with the MCAT, maybe you have a low GPA and you feel like you still can't get into medical school. I mean, whatever the, the situation is that you're in right now, um, if you guys need some help getting into medical school, come chat with me on Facebook. My Facebook page is called Med School Mentor. Um, it's where you, I do all of my pre-med advising. But just know that you are not your grades. You are not a multiple choice test. And medicine definitely is not a multiple choice test, even though that's what we've made it out to be. I know plenty of physicians that were never good test takers who, you know, barely passed their classes and they're great physicians today, like absolutely great physicians. And it's because going back to all of these issues with evaluating someone based on a test, there's a lot of disadvantages that we don't take into account. So hopefully some of you guys found this video useful. I know at least for me, just talking this out makes me feel better because I'm not a great test taker. Um, as you guys can tell from my past, like pre-med, science GPA, my MCAT scores, even some of my med school exams um, were not something to brag about whatsoever. I did do pretty well on a lot of my med school exams um, just because I was more interested in those particular topics and sometimes the classes were just taught well. But I by no means need a multiple choice test to tell me what I do and what I don't know. Because like I said, the questions are being written by experts, people that are truly interested in that particular topic and you can only know so much in medical school you're not going to pass every exam you will fail exams in medical school i can 100 percent guarantee that um, that you guys will all fail at least one med school exam um, but that's okay i encourage you guys to seek out a pass fail medical school because it alleviates a lot of stress just knowing that you just need to do well enough to pass and move on because once you get to clinical rotations, that's truly where you're gonna learn how to become a doctor. That's truly where you're gonna start retaining information because you're gonna take care of 10 to 15 to 20 diabetics every single day. And so if the diabetic medications aren't coming to you guys right now in medical school, then don't worry. I mean, obviously you need to probably know them for your board exams, but they will solidify in your mind once you start your clinical rotation. And so as long as you guys can just get through these multiple choice exams and pass your classes and just move on 
to clinical rotations, you guys are gonna be just fine. But if you guys wanna learn a little bit more about my pre-med journey, um, you guys can click on this video here or link in the description. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful. And hopefully it alleviated a lot of your guys' stress that you're feeling right now as a pre-med or as a med student. Um, so I hope to see you guys in another one of my videos.